Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you created all things in wonderful beauty and order. Help us now to perceive how so more wonderful is the new creation, by which in the fullness of time you redeemed your people through the sacrifice of our Passover, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The second reading is from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, Abraham, he called. Here I am, he replied. Take your son, God said, your only child, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him as a burnt offering on a mountain I will point out to you. Abraham took wood for the burnt offering, loaded it on Isaac, and carried in his own hands the fire and the knife. Then the two of them set out together. Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, he said. Yes, my son, he replied. Look, he said, here are the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, my son, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. Then the two of them went on together. When they arrived at the place God had pointed out to him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood. Then he bound his son Isaac and put him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and seized the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, he said. I am here, he replied. Do not raise your hand against the boy, the angel said. Do not harm him. For now I know you fear God. You have not refused me your son, your only son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. response to which verse of the psalm is preserve me O God I take refuge in you O Lord it is you who are my portion and cup it is you yourself who are my prize I keep the Lord ever in my sight since he is at my right hand I shall stand firm preserve me O God I take refuge in you you will show me the path of life the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. Preserve me, O God, and take refuge in you. Let us pray. God and Father of all who believe in you, you promised Abraham that he would become the father of all nations. And through the death and resurrection of Christ, you fulfill that promise. Everywhere throughout the world, you increase your chosen people. May we respond to your call by joyfully accepting your invitation to the new life of grace. The third reading is from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me so? Tell the sons of Israel to march on. For yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea, and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry ground. I, for my part, will make the heart of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, of all his army, his chariots, his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night, and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted, and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea, walls of water to right and left of them. The Egyptians gave chase, 
After them they went right into the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and cloud and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us free from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea as day broke. The sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to right and to left of them. That day the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord of Moses and his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honour of the Lord. I will sing, I will sing to the Lord. Glorious his triumph. I will sing to the Lord. Glorious his triumph. Horse and rider he is thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength, my song, my salvation. This is my God, and I extol him. My Father's God, and I give him praise. I will sing, I will sing to the Lord. Glorious his triumph. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh he hurled into the sea. The flower of his armies drowned in the sea. The deeps hide them, they sank like a stone. I will sing, I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. Your right hand, Lord, glorious in its power, your right hand, Lord, has shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your glory, you crushed the foe. I will sing, I will sing to the Lord, Glorious his triumph. You will lead them and plant them on your mountain, the place, O Lord, where you have made your home, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands have made. The Lord will reign for ever and ever. I will sing, I will sing to the Lord. Glorious his triumph. Let us pray. Father, even today we see the wonders of the miracles you worked long ago. You once saved a single nation from slavery, and now you offer that salvation to all through baptism. May the peoples of the world become true sons of Abraham and prove worthy of the heritage of Israel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O come to the water, all you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money, and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen, and your souls will live. 
Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to each verse is with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Truly God is my salvation. I trust I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my saviour. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Declare the greatness of his name. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Sing a psalm to the Lord, for he has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, only hope of the world, by the preaching of the prophets, you proclaimed the mysteries we are celebrating tonight. Help us to be your faithful people, for it is by your inspiration alone that we can grow in goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. O people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Him serve with fear, his praise forth tell. Come ye before him and rejoice. Is God indeed without our aid? He did us make. We are His folk, He doth us feed, and for His sheep. changing power and light. Look with mercy and favour on your entire church. Bring lasting salvation to humanity, so that the world may see the fallen lifted up, the old made new, and all things brought to perfection, through him who is their origin, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To Him be glory forever, to Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus, 
Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. To him be glory forever. To him be glory forever. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To Him be glory forever. To Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you have brightened this night with the radiance of the risen Christ. Quicken the spirit of family in your church. Renew us in mind and body to give you wholehearted service. Grant this through our risen Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptised in Christ, we were baptised in his death. In other words, when we were baptised, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realise that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy this sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course, he is finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him any more. When he died, he died once for all to sin. So his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Praise Thanks you. be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Spread the good news o'er all the earth. Jesus has died and is risen. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. We have been crucified with Christ, now we shall live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. God has proclaimed the just reward. 
life for all peoples. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. Come, let us praise the living God. Joyfully sing to our Saviour. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. The Lord be with you all. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. After the Sabbath, and towards dawn on the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala and the other Mary went to visit the sepulchre. And all at once there was a violent earthquake. But the angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. His face was like lightning, his robe white as snow. The guards were so shaken, so frightened of him, that they were like dead men. But the angel spoke and said to the women, There is no need for you to be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said he would. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead, and now he is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him. Now I have told you. Filled with awe and great joy, the women came quickly away from the tomb and ran to tell the disciples. And there, coming to meet them, was Jesus. Greetings, he said. And the women came up to him, and falling down before him, clasped his feet. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they must leave for Galilee. They will see me there. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christians to the Paschal victim offer sacrifice and praise. The sheep are ransomed by the Lamb, and Christ the undefiled hath sinners to his Father reconciled. Death with life contended, Combat strangely ended, life's own champion slain, yet lives to reign. Victime Pascali Laudes, Alleluia, Alleluia. Tell us, Mary, say what thou didst see upon the way. The tomb the living did enclose. I saw Christ's glory as he rose. Angels there attesting, shod with grave clothes resting. Christ, my hope, has risen, he goes before you into Galilee. Chris offers sacrifice and praise, the sheep are ransomed by the Lamb, and Christ the undefiled hath sinners to his Father reconciled. There are so many words at the Easter Vigil, and I'm reluctant to give even more words this night. But sometimes words are necessary. What are we celebrating? The celebration of Easter! What are we celebrating? 
Are we celebrating him rising from the grave? Well, yeah, but not just that. So much more than that. You see, and this thought isn't my own, Google N.T. Wright on YouTube, the man's amazing. But through the death and the resurrection, N.T. Wright says, all evil in the world was brought together to that point. And by dying and rising again, he defeated all evil. Yes, there are traces of it. There are echoes of it. We're suffering some of the echoes of evil as I speak. There are echoes of evil. But ultimately, no power. Do you remember, I've been talking over the past weeks about reality under reality. This night of nights is where reality broke through forever. Do you remember in the reading of Good Friday afternoon, the veil of the temple being torn in two? That's not just a dramatic detail. It's incredibly significant. It was the veil of the temple that separated the presence of God from the people of Israel. By the Gospels telling us that veil was torn, it was saying reality was breaking through. The veil was torn in preparation for reality to break through. The real reality. And it's as a consequence of this that the resurrection happens. It's as a consequence of this that we too will enjoy eternal life. But these are consequences of the ultimate fact that reality is here and the world is changed because of it. The world is changed and can never be the same. Human nature can never be the same. Why? Because human nature is guaranteed not to end with death. Human nature is guaranteed not to end just with our own pathetic strength and resolution and thoughts and lack of strength. That's not the end of the story. The wonderful thing about Easter is it's not the end of any story that relies just on human strength and ingenuity because reality has broken through and the human reality can never be less. By becoming one of us, God has dragged up humanity so that we can be like him. So that in this life, we too can live that resurrection reality, even though we still have these bodies. We live resurrection reality now. And after our death, continue that resurrection reality in his presence, where there won't even be 